Imagine a classroom without the need for a pen or paper. How will technology change the way we approach education from experiential learning, coding in classrooms, and to the role of parents? We ask our experts on Child News Asia's perspectives what the future of learning will look like. Well, historically, over the last thousand years, the education industry has been around theory and knowledge. Now, with technological disruption, you have the opportunity to add on uh, a new form of skill set that will be important in the future, which is technological competencies, obviously. And then thirdly, you have to have emotional and social skills in order to make sense of it. This provides context into real world, real world situations. Memorizing information by itself is no longer uh, relevant at all. Uh, uh, and that is a part we need to recognize. Uh, the changing jobs, uh, it com jobs completely disappearing from the market is a reality. And kids must understand that as well. So uh, when they go start their learning journey, they need to understand that it's going to be a, a journey without a destination. Uh, it's a journey that will continue because they need to keep learning, relearning. Uh, I use the word unlearning sound of the thing. Unlearning is really about uh, uh, saying that something I know is no longer relevant. I just have to move on. The British government is absolutely uh, focused on the need to prepare our children for the future challenges of the, of the global economy and so they have introduced coding in classrooms from the age of five so that our young children right from the word go are getting to grips with some of the technicalities that lie behind it. Not so that they all become computer programmers when they grow up but so that they have some sort of idea about how this, these new technologies can be harnessed in positive and different ways. So parents are a source of information for projects in school. They can be part of the audience for that work. So if a school, uh, a group, a class of school children have done a project and they are presenting that, then part of the audience can be the parents. And through that presentation process, they can begin to understand just how much their own children are learning and developing and growing and changing. If technology is such a game changer, how do we level the playing field for developing economies? Yes, there are many in, in Asia and in many of the emerging markets that don't have as much um, in terms of uh, the learning tools and the platforms that the developed markets have. But if you look at all the markets in Asia, in, in Asia across the board, the adoption of the mobile phone, the smartphone, the being connected, those things are there. And in fact, in Asia, we're the fastest adopters of that. So using, it's not about, it's, it's about how do you then take that connectivity? How do you take those devices that people have and be able to then leverage that to give them access to content that otherwise they won't have. Firstly, I must say, chalkboards are actually still a great way of learning. Um, so let's, let's put that as a baseline, that it's great to have chalkboards. Obviously, you need to have uh, technology in education as well. Um, it shouldn't swing all the other way into where you only have technology and kids are only using iPads or touch screens at school and not using chalkboards. Chalkboards actually provide a sense of um, direct, you know, hands-on, that there is something purely cognitive when a child picks up chalk and draws and, and there's something that's missing in when a child just touches a screen, right? So, that, so clearly the blended learning is something that we would advocate. You don't take strip one out at the expense of the other. Education for all young people, but in particular education for girls. And I think that's a particular challenge in many Asian societies, ensuring that young girls have access to primary and then secondary uh, education. Technology has a role to play in that. Uh, but it's not just about the educational technologies, it's about how we extend uh, infrastructure to remote communities. And some of the breakthroughs in renewable energy technologies and distributed grids, they have a role to play, it, play in this. The future of learning is about being able to create and to build and to have the confidence to do it. I guess I would say the future of learning is internationalization. The future of learning to me is blended learning. It's all about balance, right? It's about, yes, technology is important. It is a transformative uh, experience and it should be for the education industry. 
but it is not the only thing. The future of learning is about learning how to continue uh, to adapt yourself to a changing world and the ability to continue to connect dots in wonderful way to keep creating uh, new services, new product, and new way to help the people of this world. I would say the future of learning is about collaboration. So it is my strongly held belief that the curriculum in all schools should de be developed in partnership with the community. That is businesses, that is local authorities, but that's also parents and other organisations in the community.